What's good everyone? I'm Yandrak and today I'm gonna play Esper for my first playthrough uh, for Patreon and parts of those will be on YouTube as well. Uh, so I'm gonna play Esper as per usual these last couple weeks. This is the same 75 I used to win a challenge uh, a few weeks back and I'm not gonna talk too much about the decklist itself because I've already published a deck guide with sideboard guide on Patreon. I've published numerous videos when I'm talking about Esper and because I I assume this video will be quite lengthy. Anyways, uh, I'd rather not have any any re redundant content that I've already shared. So yeah, and let's just jump right into it. Match one. Uh, we are on the draw against an unknown opponent who mulliganed to six, and we are presented with a um, with a decent seven card hand that I'm gonna keep. Um, if they are playing creatures, then obviously fatal push is great. And I'm very high on opt snapcaster mage hands in general. Uh, okay, Snowcourt Forest Noble Hierarch. Wonder what's this? Mm. Noble Hierarch isn't very popular these days, really. Uh, aside from humans, and th that's not humans. Uh, with Snowcourt Forest, uh, or with Forest of any kind, for that matter. Uh, so I assume it's either Heliot. With a one of noble hierarch or something like band stone blade, double forest, and birds of paradise. Okay. Now I have no idea what this what this is. Okay, supreme verdict is likely a good draw against a deck with mana dorks. Um, I think sequencing lands in this deck is kinda. It's kind of challenging, so um, don't autopilot it. Um, and I think the best one to play is Pull to Delta uh, because it's more likely to to get a basic planes than it's than it is to get basic swamp with Supreme Verdict in play. So or in hand rather. So I'd rather have this in play and the option of fetching a painless white source later on. Okay. I have no idea what this is. Is it just company? Some sort? Okay, I'm gonna opt in response. Um, maybe I hit force of negation. I did not, but I hit opt. And now I will just fetch a basic island untapped. I wonder if that's Heliod, but I think it's kind of unlikely that it's Heliod with so many dorks. Oh, it is Heliod, and it, actually. So yeah, I, I guess the first challenge post bans were... The first challenge that Heliod won post bans uh, was a Sunday one by Mr. Rab, and Mr. Rab played the Birds Hierarch version over... over the more traditional... Um, more traditional... Utopia Sprawl Arbor Elf setup. So now I'm looking for stuff like uh, Archmage's Charm would be, or Esper Charm would be insane because they only have two cards, including Ballista. I'm gonna take Mana Leak anyways. Because I basically want anything that I can cast this turn. Um, so I bridge into this Supreme Verdict nicely. Because I assume that. Once I once I supreme verdict them, it will be very hard for them to win. Uh, so I wonder if I even want this untapped. Um, wonder. So basically, if I play this untapped, it's because I want to snap up, and I wonder if I want to snap up this turn. If there if there's anything that makes me want to snap up instead of just uh, of just going mana leak on something like Heliot. Um, because I there is no reason to lose this snapcast really to verdict, so I think I'm just gonna play it tapped. Also save, saves me to life, which is usually not that relevant against Heliot, uh, but sometimes it is. So might might as well do that.
some danger to playing this Godless Shine last turn and playing Godless Shine now is that there is a very small chance that they will sacrifice Ranger Captain of Eos in response to me fetching. Okay, so if their last two cards, they're, they're, one of their cards, the cards is definitely Ballista. Uh, if the other is Company, they need precisely Heliot plus Conclave Mentor to win. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna go for Verdict. I also don't have a reasonable way to outplay Heliot plus Conclave Mentor line um, down the line because I would need. If I had push, then I will be more likely to wait to wait one more turn because I have fifth land. Uh, but as it is, I think it's just better to it's just better to Supreme Verdict now. Uh, and they don't have company. Everything is, uh, as they say, Gucci. So. We should be fine now. Okay. This is either Ballista or Company, but I assume it's Ballista because they are paying the cost in a way that indicates it's the next spell. And I'm gonna play the Fairy. Gonna plus, uh, and then if they attack Ballista or attack the fairy with Ballista, I'm gonna let it let it go, and then if they if they ever pump, I'm just gonna eliminate in response, so they can only get deal for damage total to to the fairy. And if they wait with with the pump, uh, I can just yeah I will plus the fairy now so I get to I get to just deal with this ballista even if they if they don't pump I'm gonna float this mana just to eliminate if I if I um, if I want to eliminate then I want to have this mana untapped. For the return, obviously. I guess there's better to tap uh, black blue since it it conceals a bit better what I'm trying to do. But I think if I'm tapping black white, it's fairly obvious. I want to. I want to uh, kill their creature. Okay, and that's enough for them to concede. Uh, so, yeah, as I've said multiple times, I think Heliod is the best deck in modern right now. Um, and also, I think that Esper is pretty good against it. So the way I like to sideboard in this matchup is um, to just give me a second. Okay. I'm taking Chaos Giles. I'm ta I'm basically trimming the more more top heavy funky cards, and then I'm bringing in some cheaper means of interaction. Uh, I don't know how good the second eliminate is. Uh, I think it's close to have Eliminator or Snapcaster Mage, and I think I'm actually gonna lean on Snapcaster Mage, uh, on lean towards Snapcaster Mage over second Eliminate, since Snapcaster Mage can also be a counter spell. Uh, so the Fairy Time Raveler is a pretty decent postboard card against Heliod, I think, because it makes Veil of Summer much worse, and 
it forces them to company on their own turn, which means that uh, your force of negation would be also much better. Okay, uh, this is an a unkeepable hand, sadly. Uh, they mulligan to six as well, once again. And now we are presented with a decent six card hand. They mulligan to five. I'm gonna bottom one of these Teferi's Hero of the Minaria, which is I think, quite, quite easy. Uh, and we have a fairly nice curve of Spells and Slash Push uh, into super, hopefully Supreme Verdict Teferi, just as we did last game, basically. Also, push is better against them than against a regular Hel Heliot build uh, because uh, they because they have more mana dorks and they don't have Utopia Sprawls. It's not gonna fetch. There is no 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 need to. Uh, also, if I fetch, it's somewhat possible that they will just. Uh, in response, crack their own fetch land and play a Ladam Call and I'd rather spell snare it if I can. Another thing that's also worth keeping in mind is that because uh, because uh, they sometimes have choke in their deck, uh, if you drive filter land like Mystic Gate, I think it's Almost always better to go for Godless Shrine over over a blue duel, so the choke hurts you less. Uh, I'm gonna kill it, even though they can Aladamrish call in response or Veil of Summer, uh, because if they Veil now, th this means they don't have a Veil for later, uh, when it's actually important. And if don't, they don't have Veil, uh, that means that their bird is dead and they can't company next turn. So it's very yeah it's is that it's in general pretty hard to to play around the veil in this matchup uh, completely. You just have to pick your spots where veil uh, isn't that scary basically. Okay, I'm gonna do this because I don't have a counter spell for for the company. Uh, so my best bet is to stop company this way. Company, and suddenly we don't have a third land still. Let's see what they hit. Okay, so that's that's the whole combo basically. Uh, that's very un unlucky for us. But it's still not lost. If I draw a fetch land. Uh, it should be pretty, pretty decent for us. Even a non-fetchable, non-fetch land, land is still okay. They need six mana to okay. Uh, sure. Yeah, I can't do anything in response, so I'm not gonna. Uh, if they play spike feeder, I don't care at all. Uh. One of the reasons I think this is a decent matchup for for control is that uh, you can beat Infinite Life at e with ease, so I'm usually not really concerned about uh, I'm not really concerned about uh, about the Infinite Life aspect of of them uh, in general. So yeah, I'm I'm just gonna skip in the video to the point in which they they got enough life. For their likely liking, even though, as I've said, the amount of life they have is basically irrelevant with the fairy and Jace. Okay, so they decided to go to 55. Um, and in general, I think I'm in a very good position now. Um, and I think this last turn showed their uh, unfamiliarity with the matchup. Because they, they used one of their most valuable defensive tools, which is Ranger Captain of Eos uh, triggered ability. Uh, or activate the ability rather uh, to force through spike feeder which is basically an inconsequential piece of cardboard in the matchup
I think I can wait one more turn at least. Okay, now I have Force of Negation, which means that I can deal with Force of uh, with their Collected Company if they they proceed to do something like uh, end of turn company in response to my cryptic command on their spike feeder. Uh, if they go for company here, I think I have two lines. Um, I can either let it resolve and hope that they don't hit a Conclave Mentor, but I think the better line to take here is to counter the company and return Helio to their hand. With this line, they are gu I'm guaranteed that I live next through through next turn unless they top deck, uh, unless they top deck mm, Conclave Mentor because I know that the last card is Walking Ballista, and they can't even canopy for it. They have to play Heliot and have Conclave Mentor as well. So I still think pretty good about my chances here. One slightly annoying thing is that. Now I don't have an out to Ballista. Um, so this is a bit annoying. Um, and here I think I'm just passing once again. One thing that this spike feeder can do, which is kind of annoying, is that they can use it to. They can use it to. I'm gonna spell start this champion. They can use it to gain life and put counters on Ballista. But right now, I'm gonna. I'm gonna use the Snapcaster Mage. I'm gonna target Fatal Push. And I'm gonna block Spike Feeder and I'm gonna have Push. So if they play a Ballista post combat, I can push it. And if they don't, I'm, go I'm just gonna spike uh, push their Spike Feeder in the end step. And if they bail of summer this, I'm gonna force of negation on Supreme Verdict. Eladamri's call. Uh, I think I'm gonna force this because these Supreme Verdicts are likely fairly low impact at this point, and at least the second copy. Uh, and this force of negation can really tack and a good target anymore as well. Okay, Mana Leak is a very nice draw, especially if I manage to draw land 5, because I can defer into Mana Leak, which is a very powerful sequence, usually. Yeah, once again, I don't really care about the Spike Feeder. Okay, I drew land number five. I'm gonna fetch a swamp. Uh, since as I've said before, choke can be a consideration, and thanks to Mystic Gate, I have all my mana. Uh, I'm gonna play the Ferient Plus, and I should be safe from their combo. Okay. Yeah, once again, they are going for some, some life. Okay, they just went for one one loop, so to speak. So uh, I guess there's no need for that. I'm going to untap Mystic Gate and Jumped Catacombs since I think it re represents the, the most broad array of answers that I can possibly have in my hand. Uh, if they top deck a land, 
They can go Ballista for one. And uh, then pay for my mana leak, remove one counter and th then give lifelink. But if they are going Ballista for two, which it seems, it looks like they do, I will just mana leak this. Um, and even if they have Veil of Summer, unless they have one more land, um, they can't win this turn and they will just bury their, their board. Okay. Uh, so it looks like opponent, opponent had enough. Uh, so it's a fairly quick 2 and 0 against Heliot. And I'm gonna see you once more for match number two. Okay. Here we are back for round number two. We are once again on the draw against an unknown opponent with no companion, which is usually the first thing I'm looking for uh, when I'm when I'm paired. Uh, is whether my opponent has companion because it obviously can help you make a more informed decision. And they kept a seven card hand. And I think this is a fairly decent seven. It's obviously quite soft to creatures, especially with, uh, if they have no two drops. Uh, but it has force, it has a Teferi that I can play towards, and it has Spellsner, which is usually one of the best cards in the deck on the draw. So I'm gonna keep it. And my opponent left uh, started off with uh, Spire Bluff Canal, which I assume can be either Prowess or Storm. Spire Bluff Canal, no turn one play, is most likely Storm. It looks like they are... Oh, okay, it's actually Living End. Uh, so I guess this spell center is useless. And my hand got significantly worse because of that. Um, but I can still pitch spell center to force, so that's okay. Uh, here I'm gonna play Polter Delta for the same reason as as last time, because it's more most more likely to get planes in general than basic swarm, unless you are playing against like Burn and you want to push early on without losing too much life, and also because these decks can have Blood Moon from time to time, so I'd rather have a planes than a swamp and play under Blood Moon, because one of my one of the ways to beat Blood Moon with this deck is to use Teferi Hero of Dominaria that I can play through, uh, from Island and Blades, obviously. Uh, so this is a fairly tough spot. Um, if they decide to go for upkeep, demo, uh, upkeep Violent Outburst, thank God they, they didn't. Um, and now I'm just passing with Force of Negation for free mana and also for an alternative cost. Um, they can they have their own forces, so it's also possible that they will just go for Violent Outburst DOT and then back it up with Force. But it looks like it's not the case because they already cycled Aven. But they stacked up their graveyard quite nicely and uh, at this point, one living hand is lethal. I believe it's 22 damage, so yeah. So yeah, I'm just gonna play my lands till I, uh, till I can maybe get enough lands or I draw another counter spell so I can play the fairy. Uh, but I wouldn't hold my breath because this game looks uh, quite grim, to be honest. Yeah, I'm gonna use Force of Negation on this Living Hand, obviously. Pay free mana for that. Oh, and we'll see if they have their own Force. They do, and as I said, we are dead, because we can't, we can't beat 22 power. Okay, Living Hand, um, I think, should be a fairly okay matchup. Uh, especially post board because Teferi Time Raveler is very strong against them. Uh, and the sideboard plan for this matchup is obviously you are taking out Spellsner, which has no targets. Fatal Push is also bad, so it's Eliminate. So it's like I tend to cut 
one cryptic one jace against most blue combo decks because it's just very hard to it's very hard to uh, to land one of those profitably and i'm bringing in these eight cards Kyle's guy with fairly self explanatory it's a graveyard hate card against a living end deck then i have supreme verdict that i can play either with uh, either with Teferi on instant speed, which usually do doesn't come up because if I have Teferi, they can't living end. But it's mostly here so I can, for example, Cryptic Command into Verdict, or if they just go for a living end with two creatures, or sometimes they have, uh, sometimes they have these the sideboard plan of taking out living ends and putting in Rhinos, and against Rhinos, living uh, Supreme Verdict is pretty decent as well. And then of course more counter magic to deal with deal with their pesky stuff. Um, and yeah, let's see how how it goes post board. Yep, this is definitely a hand I'm gonna keep. Uh, as I've said, the fairy time Reveler is excellent against them. Uh, Davin's veto is likely the best counter spell against them as well, since. Uh, they can't play Veil of Summer because of the nature of Cascade mechanic. So they can play any cards with ACMC less than 3. So this Dovin Vito is just a hard counter for their living end. Of course, only 2 lands are kind of concerning. But it looks like I don't have to be concerned with it anymore. I played this fetch land, uh, even though I have no intention cracking it so far. So far, because uh, I'd rather have a fetch land if they have Blood Moon and then crack it in response. And um, and if they um, and yeah, and if they don't have Blood Moon, I can just crack it whenever I want. I don't, you don't have to crack your fetch lands uh, on, on the spot, basically. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so you can wonder why I haven't played this. I just don't want to play an unprotected Teferi because it's such a crucial part of my plan. Uh, so I, I'd rather just sit here and Esper Charm EOT, especially with this Force backup. Without Force, I, I would be more uh, more into jamming the... I would be more into jamming the, uh, the Teferi. But with Force of Negation backup, I can just chill and and draw cards EOT. I want to hit my land drops, basically. And even though they can't play any cards with ACMC less than 3, they have forces which are free to cast on my turn. And they usually have a lot of Mystical Disputes postboard, which is technically CMC free, but can also attack the Fairy for 1 mana. Okay, and I'm perfectly fine with this. And here I think I'm just gonna... I can either pass or I can play another Esperator on my turn. Uh, which is better if I draw a land. I think I'm... Oh, I actually click pressed one, which is pass priority. So never mind, I guess. But yeah, I think playing Esper Charm on my turn was, was a decent way to proceed with this game. So yeah, I'm gonna draw two cards now. So at this point, if they have another copy of Mystical Dispute plus Violent Outbursts, I'm in a consider considerable danger. Um, but short of that, it should be it should be okay.
Uh, I think I'm gonna pitch uh, Mana Leak. Can also pitch Jace, I think. Pitching Jace is somewhat reasonable here. And it looks like they were trying to pay costs. Kind of makes me think that they have that they have first of negation of their own. So here I'm gonna play Jace because if they have force, I want them to use it, and I'd rather them have them force my Jace than my Teferi next turn. Okay, perfect. Uh, I'm gonna brainstorm to in hopes of finding a blue card that's not Teferi or Vito. Because these are premium cards in the matchup, so I'd rather use something like Charm to pitch to Force. It's also worth noting that they only have 13 power, so I'm not instantly dead to to their to their combo. And I can actually I can actually survive a good deal of time. Because I can bounce uh, one of their events with, uh, with the fairy and then I can Okay. And then I can maybe Dig for stuff of Jace. Okay, so here I'm gonna play the fairy. Uh, I'm gonna play a land first, and on, I have another land on, on the top of my deck, so I'd rather not draw it. Um, and here I'm gonna play around a potential Blood Moon by tapping like this, so I still have Veto in the Blood Moon and pass uh, pass the pace. Uh, to the, their second main phase. They're probably switching now to plan B, which is just casting their creatures. And I'm basically not scared of anything short of Stripe Riverwinder, which is a Hexproof 5-5. Which can be somewhat tough to beat without Kaya's Guide, but... Uh, I have 4 copies, so... Somewhat likely to draw one. Uh, I'm gonna use pet use Vito on Petty Theft. Because there, there isn't any... There isn't really anything that... And they can do to punish me for this now. Even if they have the aforementioned Blood Moon, I can just bounce it. That's somewhat annoying. Um, I think I'm gonna just plus on myself. And I'm gonna plus here as well, because I don't want to lose either of these to Brazen Borrower. I also don't want to give them, give them another Petty Theft, so they can bounce my Teferi and Living and then. And next time I can just brainstorm and hopefully find something like... Well, I mean, I already have Cryptic Command, which is pretty good on top of my deck. But maybe I can also find Kaya's Guile to just end this game.
Okay, I'm gonna put these two on top. Then we're gonna play the fairy time regular. That is getting forced on another force of negation. Uh, I'm gonna use mana leak to counter this force. And then I'm just fine with spinning the wheels and bouncing this, bouncing this brazen borrower. So they have to replay it. And even though they get to bounce off one of my planeswalkers again, that now my Teferi is one loyalty. So if they bounce it, I can just, they bounce the fairy, they replay brazen borrower. I play the fairy bounce brazen borrower again, and my Jace remains intact. So I think this, it is a fairly good exchange for for me here. The only danger is them top decking a cascade spell this precise turn. Uh, but ever ever since the next turn I will have for, or from the next turn onwards I will have the option of playing Teferi and Scripty King. So yeah, we're just gonna do the same uh, song and dance. I'm just gonna fetch first because I don't want to draw a land that's on top of my deck. And now I don't have to bounce anymore because next turn I can just play. Uh, I guess I could have played the fair hero of the Minaria as well. Question mark. Uh, okay, they just conceded. They understood that this will just go over and over forever and they will draw one card that's random and I will draw one card plus three additional cards from off, off of Jade the Mind Sculptor so yeah. they realize that their the re resistance is futile okay so let's go uh, to game three and uh, this is a serviceable hand uh, I have upped I have Multiple counter spells. I have the fairy time raveler. I'm missing white mana, but overall this hand is is very strong. Uh, especially like this type of hands get even stronger with Simeon Spirit Guide bands because they can't really turbo you out. Uh, so this logic knot on turn three will counter their free drop, as 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 before. It wasn't also always the case because they could have just had Spirit Guide to pay for it. But now that's not the case anymore. The interesting question is what I will fetch if I draw a fetch land. Uh, I tend to send back my fetch lands for as long as possible uh, to decide which colors of mana I want. And with this water grave, now it's pretty easy that I will get a white land with fetch land. There's, there was also a possibility of getting uh, Gallus Train, but then I can't cast. Every I can't cast Archmage's Charm off, off of Island, Vantress, Godless Shrine. But as I've said, with this Water Grave, everything became much, much easier. Okay, they have eleven power in the graveyard, so at least we are not dead in one swing, which is cool. It looks like they are going for something here. Well, they are just cracking now, so they can they can play it on my turn, but I think, don't think it makes that much sense. Okay. I'm gonna. I, I hope they don't have force. 
They showed me one, two forces, so yeah. Can obviously have a force of their own in hand. Uh, and yeah, the, like this scenario is why I think this deck is pretty decent. Uh, and why, why it's better than like the non-blue living end decks, because actually protecting your combo with force of negation is very, very good. And right now I have very, very slim chances of winning this game. It's not impossible to win, uh, but it will be very hard. Uh, I have to top deck Cryptic Command uh, into Mystic Gate Supreme Verdict, basically. And now I don't have any outs. Or is it true? It's not actually true. I can Chaos Guile if I find a white source. And it's not a white source, so we are in fact defeated. And I'm gonna see you for game number or match number three. Okay, uh, we are here for match three. We are against one of the saltiest person uh, or saltiest people on Magic Online, which is Magic Devil 666. Uh, they usually play Blue Tron, but I think this hand is just a very good keep on the play against an unknown opponent as well. And it happens to be pretty decent against Blue Tron, I think. So we'll just start on a, on a top land. And it looks like they're in fact playing Tron. I'm just gonna go for this water grave. And if nothing happens, I'm just gonna Esper Charm in the end step. I'm just gonna draw two cards EOT. If they have Thirst for Knowledge, so be it. If they condescend or, or remand this, also so be it. Okay. These were some very, very nice draws. Uh, cryptic Command, Force of Negation, basically two best cards I could have hoped for. Because now if they go for ter for EOT, TFK, or, or Terrors for Knowledge, I can just Cryptic Command it and draw a card. Digging towards more counter spells, more Teferis, stuff like this. Yeah, I don't really care about this relic. And definitely I don't care about it enough to use Force of Negation. Even though like Supreme Verdict is pretty bad in the matchup, so it's a free pitch, so to speak. I don't think it's worth the Force of Negation alone. In this spot. Especially since I have two, so even though I have a free pitch card, I, I don't uh, want to just spew it. If I had free untapped mana, then I guess I will just force of negation uh, for for free mana. But since it wasn't the case, I think it was okay just letting this relic go. Gonna fetch first, then I'm gonna opt. So in general, you want to fetch before your opt, obviously. So then the bad cards that you bottom stay stay on the bottom. Shark Typhoon for two. Okay. Okay, so they have a Tron completed. But it's not the end of the world. Bluetron doesn't have the same density of payoffs or anything as scary as like Ulamok, the ceaseless hunger, but in fact this Fodnot series is rather annoying. In response, I'm gonna make them sacrifice a creature and create a 1-1 one -one token, I think.
and I assume they will take one of my forces. Or if they have something like Wurmkrill Engine, they will just take Mana Leak. It's entirely possible as well. They actually took Supreme Verdict. Okay. I'm not gonna attack because I don't want to run into another Shark Typhoon. Um, and here I, yeah, I think I want to counter this TFK, okay? even though this means I can't scry EOT. And I'm not gonna block here. And yeah, once again, I didn't attack because of another Shark Typhoon, so even though not attacking and not blocking looks kind of weird, I think it was okay here. Oracle Engine, I can't do anything about Oracle Engine, sadly. Okay. This can be fairly decent. Okay, I'm gonna block Wormcall Engine if given the option. Explosives for zero. I'm gonna draw two cards. In response, and if I draw Fatal Push, I'm just gonna let it resolve, and I'm gonna kill Fondal Seer. Uh, I'm gonna draw two cards again. And yeah, I'm gonna be fine with this. I'm just gonna use Snapcaster Mage to jump this for that's here. But this game is looking quite quite grim. That was enough to to win, and now we have Cyber against Bluetron, which is the matchup I haven't played in a long time. Um, eliminate is obviously not great. The Fairy Time Raveler is very very strong. So is Mystical Dispute. So is Force of Negation. Uh, Monaster Mentor is obviously a very good win condition against them. Tempest Vito comes in and Field of Ring comes in. And then I like trimming Supreme Verdict. I like trimming some Fatal Pushes. Uh, you can even cut all Fatal Pushes, I think. And re rely on stuff like Chaos Guile to deal with their creatures. And then I have to cut one more card. And even though I said Mystical Dispute is quite strong, maybe it actually isn't. Because most of their payoffs are colorless, and they have a lot of mana, so there is a limited number of mana leak effects that you can have. 
I think this build is stronger than Mana Leak, actually. Because the ability to maybe play the fairy with this build on turn 4 is, is pretty strong. So I think this build is stronger than Mana Leak here. I'm gonna keep this hand. It looks okay. And Blutron is historically quite weak to creatures for some obvious reasons. I'm gonna fetch a water grave here. I'm gonna play a glacial fortress, pass the turn. And my plan is just to. Well, my plan was to just play. Okay, now with this Force of Negation, I'm just gonna play Monastery Mentor on turn 3, and then I'm gonna counter their payoff with Force of Negation. Unless their payoff is Warm Curl Engine. But they can just bounce Warm Curl Engine. The Nightmare Scenario is them killing my Monastery Mentor EOT with stuff, something like Special Contortion, and they're untapping and playing Warm Curl Engine. Okay, they looked for an island. With or they, they search an island. With expedition map. I have this member uh, that I'm gonna force. Most definitely. Okay, they have the spell as well. Uh, Which is not great. Uh, here, I think I'm gonna actually opt, even though it might might appear greedy, and I and it is definitely greedy. Uh, I still think that I need to hit land drops, and also I I'd rather counter uh, I I'd rather country on my own turn because of prowess. So this this worked out, I guess not that nice because they because they have uh, Tron. But in the end, it it wasn't terrible, I think, or anything like that. Those had a very strong draw. To Tron with Dismember and Dispel. Don't know how strong Dismember is was born to have. Like, okay, I have Mentor, but I have a Singleton Mentor, and this deck doesn't really play creatures. I don't really play creatures, these control decks. I'm just gonna draw two. Drink two with this instead of Archmage Charm because both counter spell is nice to have. Especially since on five mana you can have mana leak plus charm. And also because charm can steal Shark Typhoon token. Okay, that's acceptable. I kind of think that I have to get lucky here, and I have to draw Force of Negation. Uh, because without this token, I can't really win this game, I think.
Plus they have their own counter magic, so the scriptic command is so likely to be remanded or uh, condescended down, down the drain, so... I'd rather just use it for the full value when I can on my own turn. Yeah, this game is looking hopeless, basically, but I'll definitely play it out and just see what's, what's, what will happen. Yeah, in general, I, I really like con countering TFKs, but I don't think I can reasonably do it here. Uh, this one was a bit more difficult of a decision since I can back up my counter spell with force. But I still think that I'd rather. I'd rather just cast Archmage Charm this turn and draw two cards. I'd rather just counter their, their payoff, that's another thing. Okay. I'm actually gonna block this turn, I think. Maybe not. Maybe next turn. I'm gonna let them attack. And then depending on what I draw with this, or maybe I don't know what to draw, I will... Yeah, I, that was a bit indecisive for me. It's probably just supposed to attack. Draw two cards here. And here I will block.
I'll cast some Caster Mage. We'll come target opt. I'll just jump, double block this for not here. So here I'm gonna opt. Uh, I don't think I want to fight over this, because I have Jace. If I didn't have Jace, I might be uh, desperate enough to fight over it. Uh, but with a Jace, I think I'm just fine letting it go and trying to play Jace on my turn. Oh, wow. 10 mana. Okay. Um... This is game. This is game. Like there are some just some draws you can't beat. Uh and I'm gonna see you for match four of this league. Okay, here we are. Uh in the match four. Uh once again we are on the play against a Lures of the Dream Den deck. So the most three popular archetypes are Death Shadow, then Hammer, then Boggles. And while I'm keeping the hand against uh, against Lurus, I expect that my Fatal Push will be good, so uh, if they are playing Buggles, then I guess I will be a very sad person. Uh, but yeah, this hand is acceptable even against Buggles. On turn 1, I'm gonna start with a tapped Godlet Shrine, because if they are indeed playing Giant Shadow, which is the most popular Lurus deck, I'd rather not deal any damage to myself un until I'm below 12, 20 since if i stay on 20 they can't they can't play scourge of the skyclaves without using a card to lightning bolt me or something like this so yeah i will start with godless shrine and then play drawn catacombs then then i'm gonna start playing fetchlands and not cracking them unless i need the mana Chaos Guide was definitely a very good draw. Um, because from time to time you can get their Scourge of the Skycliffs with the you gain for life mode. Which is a very nice addition to your arsenal against these kinds of deck. I think Hex Drinker is okay. Uh, I'm gonna just fatal push it um, because thanks to them having Lurus, you almost always have a good target for your counter spells, and for obvious reasons, you'd rather mana leak than fatal push Lurus because then they don't get to play a free spell from the graveyard with with the Lurus ability. Uh, and here, okay, so I can either guide, guide them with Guile, or I can Spellsner this, because if I Guile and they have a Lightning Bolt, I'm not in a very good position, uh, so I think I'd rather Spellsner this. Uh, for what is worth, if I decided to use Guile, uh, my line would have been Exile the Graveyard and Gain 4.
Yeah, just fetching it up to a land. Being on 16 is decent because I can jump right back to 20 with Chaos Guile. Uh, so yeah, once again, I won't be that liberal with this fetch land as I was with this one. So it's going back down to 15 is a bit more consequential. Proxa. Uh, I'm fine with Proxa. Uh, I'm gonna discard Force of Negation, which is not a very good card in the matchup in general. And now with Croxa and the Graveyard, this Kaya's Guile is getting even, even more value. I don't have to use this Kaya's Guile now. They can't cast Croxa off of this mana, so I'm just gonna wait. Uh, it's somewhat unlikely that they they will have a mana source for Croxa that doesn't require fetching. Uh, here I think I'm gonna go for a for an island and I'm just gonna Archmage's trump this foot sees. Because I don't want to use, use, lose Kaya's Guile. And and the scenario I'm counting for is that I Archmage just charm this and then they play another creature and I got to Kyle's Guild creature and the Proxa. So the like, score of the Sky Cliffs is perfect. Because now I get to now I get to make them sacrifice and exile their graveyard. And I'm gonna do it immediately. In case they have something like call against command, or in case they actually have a an untapped non fetch land uh, source for for Croxa off the top of their deck. Thermograph, Thermograph is perfectly fine. Okay, Jace the my sculptor is. It's a good draw uh, that I won't use this turn, but uh, it's definitely a good play for the next turn, uh, depending on what they do. They have three cards now, and two cards. Assume some of those cards are just removal spells that are somewhat use useless. I will let them attack me for two, it's not that big of a deal. And then I'm gonna play Snapcaster Mage and I'm gonna Fatal Push this turn wave. And I'm just looking for lands. Uh, yeah, as I said, land would be the best draw because then I can both Charm and Mana Leak. So that does a trade of pushes. Cryptic Command is a pretty decent draw as well, because now, even if they draw land, they can't play around Mana League. Well, they, they can play around Mana League, but I have Cryptic Command for that for that scenario. Plus, I, I, I guess I'm just gonna use Cryptic Command no matter what, because I want to draw more lands. Okay, uh, here I'm just gonna make them discard two cards then. And then they will take my mana leak, and I'm gonna slam Jace on my turn. And with this Jace, I'm gonna plus, since there is not much value in brainstorming on the first turn. Um, okay, I can just concede it. And one of the only reason, uh, one of the only ways I can lose this game is if they top deck bolt for my Jace, and win this way. With some strings of top decks. Okay. John Death Shadow is one of the most popular decks in the format. Uh, also, one of the better decks in the format, I believe. Still think that uh, there is a clean cut best deck in modern, which is Heliod, but John Death Shadow is, is making a run for Heliod's money. Definitely. 
Yeah, against Shadow, I will cut two forces, two mana leaks, one Esper Charm, one Logic Knot, and I'm gonna bring in just more removal spells. So Purges, obviously Gaius are great. Verdict, Eliminate. In general, Counter Magic is not so good against against discard decks because Counter Magic is a very time sensitive group of cards, and discards can make can poke a pretty pretty big hole in your defenses quite easily. Okay, this end is very good. Uh, I am fully immune to stuff like choke or boil that they can have. Even though these cards are not very popular anymore, I have two removal spells, I have two snapcasters, up to find more lands. Basically, the only thing that I would like to have in this hand that it's not here is an untapped blue source, so I can opt on turn one. An island is basically an ideal draw here. Okay, second rings is definitely not terrible. Since it it allows us to remain on twenty even longer, so I assume they will just take two snowcaster mages. And now they are playing something. Another discard spell. Also, yeah, th their hand was very discard heavy. Uh, here I will assume they either take opt or celestial purge. Them taking purge makes me. Somewhat concerned about Croxa. Because this can definitely be a hand that loses to Croxa. Uh, if they play one on their turn, I, I think I'm going to opt in response. Oh, it doesn't look like it. It looks like it's just lures to their hand. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Let's find something like a charm or some caster mage or planeswalker of some sorts. Yep. Charm is exactly what the doctor ordered. Oh, and the guile, which makes us even better against against a possible Croxa type of shenanigans. Guile is also very nice because uh, they usually have some Veil of Summers in the sideboard and Guile plays around Veil of Summer beautifully. Uh, I think I'm just gonna draw two cards here. Because I want lands. And now they have to decide between Teferi and Kyle's Girl, basically. I think these are two best two best cards in my hand by by far. Okay. The fair and they have shadow. I'm just gonna deal with the shadow using Kaya's Guile because once again I am kinda concerned about Veil of Summer and the modes I will use will will be uh Exile their graveyard and sacrifice a creature, but I'm not gonna do it yet. So 
I will I will wait till till they use this mistrust bubble. And if they don't, I would, I'm just comfortable passing as long as this Death Shadow is 1-1. One, one. Okay, now a second guy I can just use Death Shadow or use Guile to uh, to create their shadow and then another one for bubble if needed. Yeah, I'm gonna go now. I don't also want to go be below 16 because with the second guile I can still kill their Scarf of the sky claims they have on. That's fine. I assume they will crack bubble now. Uh, and in response, or after they do this, I'm gonna make them. gonna exile their graveyard and gain for life. Uh, and I think in the result, this court of the sky will be in the graveyard instead of in the exile, but I'm not entirely sure yet. It's indeed how it, how it works. Definitely okay. Now I'm gonna use, I think, Fatal Push to deal with this Storm Glaive. I can also do this on their turn, question mark now, because then I can't mana leak Veil of Summer if they have one. Okay, I assume they, I assume they have Veil of Summer. Okay, so now they either didn't want to use it or they don't have one. I think both options are somewhat likely. I'm gonna find, I think, a basic swamp with this one. And some custom mage is a perfect card to draw at this point. And then we use the Snapcaster to make them sacrifice and exile the graveyard. I think it's important to constantly exile the graveyard so they can't get any value off of Lurus. I'm gonna opt, and if I draw a planeswalker, I can just play it, and there we go. Up. Yeah, I think I'm gonna play it, even though they can have Assassin's Trophy. Up. 
Yeah, I guess they, they, they would have trophied in response to my to my the fair activation, so yeah, I would assume, I would assume they don't have it or they don't want to use it. Yeah, I will use the mana leak now. And see if they have bail. They did not. Okay. So we managed to beat Death Shadow and we are now two and two in the league. So uh yeah, I will see you for match five, in which we will see if we can get a classic modern record which is three and two in a league. So see you soon. Okay, here we are. Round five for all the marbles, and in this case, mar all the marbles means three and two. Uh, we are on the draw with a fairly clunky hand against an unknown opponent, uh, but I think this is a keep still. This hand obviously can go very wrong very fast if if they are playing a deck without eliminate targets, but. My philosophy is that right now modern is a format where removal spells are decent, so you should just keep hands that are good against like heavy on removal in in the dark because that's that's what you are deciding to do when you when you enter the modern tournament with such deck. Okay, and it looks like we are against a deck where uh, eliminate will actually be decent, which is infect. Um, and even though the rest of this hand is not that great against Infect, especially with another non-land draw, uh, it is possible that we'll actually manage to win this game, but yeah, we'll see. I think in general Infect is a pretty decent matchup uh, in a free game set, especially once you know you're playing against Infect. Right armor. Okay. Okay. So here I am interested in think water grave. Uh Godless Shrine will also be an option because it allows us to cast Supreme Verdict, but most of our lands cast Supreme Verdict anyways, so I think it's rather better to get a second blue. And I hope they will just play very respectively and they won't go for anything too crazy and we can actually draw lands towards Supreme Verdict. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna use my eliminate po uh, post combat or in the second main or in the end phase rather. Um, they are very very likely to have a protection spell. I'm just using it so if I draw another removal spell, I can use it. Or yeah, like another spell that we cast.
And I think this is this is the end. I think not drawing a third land at this point is likely the end of it. Because I have to Yeah, like this is it's impossible I think to win here. Yep, especially against Impon Nexus, so there is nothing we can do. And this is game one. Okay. It, yeah, we are up against Infect, which is once again not a very popular deck these days. Uh, and how I want to set up against it, that's actually quite interesting. Uh, I definitely want Force. I want Guiles. I think I want the Fairies and Verdict. Especially with how Infect is constructed these days. Which is a lot of spell pierces, so Verdict is pretty good against spell pierce. I think I'm just cutting some top end. That's not great. Uh, some clunky stuff. I think I want Dispute over Mana Leak, but on the draw. On the play, I think Mana Leak is better. On the draw, I think Dispute is better since it can tag the, the Agent, the Blighted Agent card. Okay, uh, yep, I still have to cut one card. I think you can just cut another Esper Charm. Uh, or you can just cut Jace, maybe. Uh, yeah, I would cut. Ah, uh, no, I will, I will stick with this, I think this is okay. We see how it will go. I think this hand isn't good enough. And this hand is, so that's cool. I'm gonna bottom swamp and then turn one I'm gonna go for water grave. I get a seven card hand, uh, which is not ideal for us, but but we will work with what we've got. They're not playing a creature on one, which means which probably means they only have one creature. Uh, because they want or they have more uh, significantly more protection spells than creatures. Because they favor protecting their stuff over mana efficiency. Um I don't need another land. And here I'm gonna use Mana Leak, I think. Uh, because I want to use my mana since they are playing a lot of spell pierces these, day these days, so... Even though technically you can just... Uh, you can just play... Uh, you can just wait, not use this Mana Leak and then cast Gale. But also, they, they, like, they don't have targets that are better or worse for Mana League, really, like, most of this, their spells are interchangeable. So, 
you, you just fire mana leak uh, when you can, basically. I wonder what they are doing. They are paying costs. Okay, they are just casting another elf. Okay, uh... Here I'm gonna make them sacrifice and make a token. I'm playing around spell peers. Uh, if I didn't draw Forge of Negation, the decision would be a bit closer, I think, between using uh, Push and Guile, because uh, Push plays around spell peers, Guile plays around their protection spells, which are, I think, more common than spell pierces. Uh, but with the Forge draw, I can protect the push with force, so that's also pretty nice. It looks like they don't have a first creature or they want, don't want to play it into my open mana. But I think this I always I always will have some open mana from this point onward basically. This land wasn't the worst draw in the world because now I can cast both of these. But I'd rather not draw more lands. And there's no real reason to play this. If I draw another land, I'm gonna play one of those, but... Right now there's no reason. Or if I play draw a spell, I want to cast. In general, I think it's fine to stun that one land in your hand. I'm gonna play this one. So they have Bale of Summer and I have Force of Negation on the Veil. So now I really need something to close out the game with. A Planeswalker, even Snapcaster Mage maybe is enough. Another Patchland, isn't it? But the good thing is that they are out of creatures. So now we are basically racing. Uh, I want to draw my... Uh, my... Uh, win conditions. They want to draw creatures, so... I think at this point it's anyone's game. Yeah, and here I'm gonna just play Snapcaster Mage and opt. Oh. Since I want to practically look for stuff. Plus, with this play, it's more likely I, I will I will know whether or not I want to play this land actually. Another subcaster mage, yeah. Don't mind if I do. Okay, they found Imp of Nexus and Glistener Elf. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, I'm gonna play this land so I can subcast the Rukaya's Guile around two spell pierces. 
or around something like cluster storm as well. I'm just gonna block both of their creatures. I assume they will just pump both of these to get rid of my blockers. Okay. Oh, they're only using one. In this case, I'm gonna Snapcaster now. And I'm gonna use Chaos Guile to make them sacrifice a creature. And to make another token. Okay. Um. So now they. Okay, now I will just use every mode in the book. Since they, I, I don't, they don't have mana up. There's. No cards in my hand, so this is just free and sometimes in fact still play a single ton copy of Becoming Man, so you can as well do this and be safe from it or be safe from some sort of back um backdoor noble hierarch draw. Okay, this was the best deck join my deck, pretty sure. Because now I just can attack I, I can just attack for five. And I should have played the very first in case they have force of negation for some reason, which is not really a infect card, but they can have it. And now I can just bounce Snapcaster Mage and Fatal Push their Impact Nexus. And next turn I will have five damage to kill them. Oh, and I even draw Chaos Guile. So yeah. All worked out perfectly in the end. Okay. Noble well, Hierarch is okay because now I even have a target for my Fatal Push EOT. And we win this game. 
Okay, game three. Uh, so as I said earlier, there's a sideboard adjustment that I like to make, which is minus leak plus dispute. Uh, it can obviously bite you from time to time, but I think in general, uh, Blighted Agent is their best creature, so I like doing this. Plus, Dispute is also better at protecting your own Teferi. So, yeah, I think this is a fine fine trade. Uh, also, mm, let's see if Modo is just lagged or, yeah, okay. I think there was a fairly uh, reasonable adjustment of. Uh, Cutting verdict for an eliminate on the draw. Okay, so this is a triple filter hand, uh, which is actually the first time it ever happened to me. I just drew all three filter lands. Now I'm still gonna have to keep this hand. Uh, it might be greedy, um, but I think it's. I think the payoff with this hand is high enough that you actually want to keep this hand. So they don't, they don't have lands, but we don't have colored mana on this turn. So there is definitely potential to go. Okay, they didn't attack for some reason. I assume this was just a misclick. So I don't think there was any actual reason to not attack here. Uh, here I'm just gonna pass. Here, I think it's, um, I think it's still not a terrible situation for us. I don't know if I like attacking with only one. I think attacking with two is just better. And then you can pen pendle him in one of those as well. If they just pass, I'm gonna pass. Uh, and I'm gonna play Mystic Gate number three. Or filter land number three, and I'm gonna cryptic command EOT. And I think I'm gonna just tap their creatures draw a card. Uh, so this way I can get rid of uh, blue mana for, from Hierarch. Uh, plus, it plays around protection spells. This is basically as neutral as I as you can get with this cryptic command. And I think this is what you are looking for in this spot. I, I, uh, I think so. Here I'm um uh, I'm definitely using this to ferry. The question is whether I want to float a black mana for a potential push, but I don't think so. I think I'm just going for Teferi and I'm bouncing uh, Noble Hierarch, I think. Then I hope to draw land. Okay, there we go. There is a land. St still not out of the woods by any means. 
uh, but a bit closer to that. At least I'm not dead to a pump spell here. Uh, I guess they could have drawn a land uh, and sandbag it, but I don't think I, I can afford to play around it. So they're killing the fairy for obvious reasons. Uh, okay, and here I can either play the fairy hero or I can Jace. Uh, and I think the play here is Jace, uh, since uh, since Jace is more likely to find me a counter spell, which is the answer I want right now to stuff like. Uh, to stuff like the one mana six for pump, which is um, Scala. Okay, perfect. Uh, we basically found everything we needed. Uh, I can just put both of these Teferis on top. Uh, I will play this with a shock. And I'm gonna offer my Snapcaster for a trade. They're going for Might of Old Croatia. Uh, that I am actually fine with. So as I've said, I'm gonna... I'm gonna use Snapcaster to block this Glisten of They have Mystical Dispute, I will force. Um, and if they tap out this turn, I will use Jace and Teferi to deal with both of their creatures. So now I believe they are debating what do what do they want to do with this 1-1 one, one Glisten Elf, whether they want to attack. Because this one is just going at me. That's pretty, pretty obvious, I think. Okay, both at me. Uh, I think it's a fine decision. Yeah, I'm gonna snap custom mage. And. Just gonna block the big one. Okay. What do they have? Apostle's Blessing. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Pitch this. Um, pitch this spell snare. I'm gonna target, I guess, Force of Negation. And I'm just gonna block the big one, as I've said before. And now I'm gonna play my land. I'm gonna bounce this, and if they just replay one of their elves, I'm gonna crack the fetch because I have another Teferi here of the Minari on top of my deck. Uh, okay, they play a fetch and a Nexus. Uh, still think I want to just crack it. And I think I'm brainstorming here. I think bounce. Well, well, we'll see what we draw. Okay, Fata push definitely brainstorming.
Okay, that's everything I needed. This can go to the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, and this is eight, eight mana worth of spells. So I'm gonna top these and play a land. So now I can play around. I guess I had an untap trigger, so I could have keep it. Yeah, but also, yeah, I guess interacting on my end step while I untap lands with the fairy isn't that great because they have some unused mana they can just use for free at this point. And I think it's very unlikely they can beat free interaction spells. Each opponent sacrifices a creature, create a white white a one one token. So they will sacrifice Ink Pump next, probably. Which is, I guess, good for me. Oh, they just conceded. Okay. So, as I've said, we managed to, to get to get the the ultimate modern record, which is three and two. Uh once again, we've played we've played this 75. This is my recommended uh, control deck at the point in mod at this point in modern, and uh, if you like this type of content, uh, definitely let me know uh, because it's been quite fun doing it and going over my lines. Uh, I've tried to be as uh, as descriptive about my lines as possible. Uh, if you thought that I talked a bit too little about them, definitely let me know as well. Uh, I was just trying to go over every my every single decision I've made, uh, and I think I've did a fairly good job of it in match one. But and then I started kind of drifting away and just going into the zone when I'm not talking that much. And I, I want to, yeah, I want to go over my lines as as much as as I can. So definitely, every feedback is appreciated. And I'm gonna see you next time. And take care.